Hi there, my name is Larson, and in this video I will be giving you an overview of Dundas BI, our business intelligence analytics and data visualization software. I'll be taking a closer look at the platform and demonstrate how you can quickly explore your data and create custom interactive dashboards to share with your team and customers. Keep in mind that you can explore every topic covered in this video in more detail by watching our other tutorial videos. Let's dive in. At a basic level, Dundas BI provides you with all your business intelligence needs under one roof. The platform is tailored to meet the needs of any user, regardless of their skill. Let's dive into each user type individually. First, we have our standard user. This user seat is perfect for users from a business analyst all the way up to C-level executives. They have the ability to interact with the visualizations and dashboards, filter, slice and dice, and fit the data to their specific needs. They also have the ability to perform self-service by taking any visualization and building a personalized dashboard. Let's take a look at the sales dashboard we've created. From the point of view of a standard user, if we were to pretend that this is the very first time we've ever seen this dashboard, it's safe to assume that we're unsure of what we're looking at and even how to read it. In this case, to begin with, we can toggle our help overlay and to get more details about each KPI and the types of interactivity I have at my disposal. Okay, great. Now we know what the dashboard is showing and how to use it, we can dive deeper into our analysis. Let's take a look at our product sales versus target visualization. It's immediately visible to us that Star Trek and Back to the Future franchises have or are very close to exceeding their targets. However, it's clear that Star Wars isn't quite there. So let's drill down to see exactly which products are not contributing to us meeting our quota. Whoa, that's not something I expected to see. It appears lightsabers are selling well short of our target. What could be causing this? Is there something specific that we should be aware of? If we drill down on lightsabers, you'll see that all central visualizations will subsequently be filtered based on our selection. As a side note, you'll notice that the filter control displayed at the top of the dashboard has been populated with the value that I selected. This indicates that we are not limited to filtering solely on one member. If we expand the filter control, you can see we have the ability to make multiple selections to filter by. Now let's get back on track. We can hover over any bubble in the middle chart. You'll see that a tooltip appears. This will review some more detailed information about any point and is fully customizable. From this, we can see we have opportunities in the POC and negotiation stage with a high average deal size. Let's go see specifically what months these opportunities fall into. We can see from our area line chart that negotiations have a downward trend in 2019. Let's drill down further into that year. By right clicking on this visualization, our context menu will appear. This will present us with tons of ways to interact with this visualization right out of the box. For example, we can filter on the data to provide more insights. We can even add notes to better describe what we're seeing and to create a dialogue for other users. And we can even revisualize the data to view it in different formats. So let's first drill down. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. We can see that in March, we have a dip in POCs and in negotiations. So let's take this one step further and get a more detailed view. Wait, an even more detailed view? You're probably wondering how can such a thing be done? Well, that's simple. With a force. I'm just kidding. If we click on the month we want to view, the dashboard will filter and navigate us to our opportunity details table. This tabular view will give us additional information about all of our opportunities in the month of March. We can filter to look specifically at the POC stage by clicking on the header and making those selections in the dropdown. I want to now rearrange my tables order and group by sales rep, so I can grab the header and drop it on the first column. Now all my opportunities are categorized by sales rep. We can click on the header to sort out the probability so we can see what opportunities we should focus on. Now since we can see a big opportunity that we want to focus on, let's notify the sales rep in charge of this to highlight that it is a primary focus. Users can set up notifications directly on the dashboard, so reaching everyone within your organization is just one click away. We can navigate through the context menu and add a note to this cell. Here we can add our comments. Great job, let's make it happen. You'll notice now that this note is embedded into our table, and if we hover, we can see who added the note and what its contents are. If I navigate through the context menu, I can set this up to notify our sales rep, Luke Skywalker, by using our note notifications. Here I can define the name of this notification. 
and I can also decide what format I want this to be exported as, and as well as who I want to receive this. I also have the ability to customize the email that will be sent by filling out the subject line and also the message body. Now Luke will be notified of this notification on the dashboard. I can also define a scheduled notification to automate my entire reporting process or even a data-driven notification to make sure we are alerted if something goes wrong. As you know, there's no coming back from the future. This was a high-level overview of some of the features standard users can utilize when interacting with dashboards. Now, let's take a look at how power users can build visualizations and dashboards in Dundas BI. Secondly, we have what we call our power user. Typically, a data analyst has the ability to choose from the data available to create powerful analytics, visualizations, and reports to provide the end user with the unique data insights or to use it for their own ad hoc analysis. Those visualizations can be arranged on a dashboard in any way imaginable to provide the end user with an intuitive experience and show the data in ways they have never seen before. We're going to take a look at how power users build visualizations and dashboards using Dundas BI. This user type differs from our standard user because they have the ability to create single visualizations using Dundas BI's metric set designer. With this designer, you're able to define and visualize your key performance indicators, or KPIs. Power users can also drag in data from various data sources and perform analysis in real time. Let's assume I want to visualize some data I have inside an Excel file. To begin building our first data visualization, I'll drag the Excel file directly onto Dundas BI's metrics set designer from our local file explorer. Dundas BI will automatically create a data connection to the Excel source and will make that data readily available for me to start doing analysis. I can now structure my visualization by deciding exactly what data I want to be displayed and how I want it to be grouped. I can perform historical analysis on data sets by using time dimensions. This will format and group the data into specified levels, ultimately allowing users to drill up and drill down to uncover new data insights. Let's apply an out-of-the-box time dimension to my close date hierarchy, but at the month level. Dundas BI allows power users to apply advanced analytics to their data sets. For example, by adding formulas such as forecasting, clustering, and correlations, or by conducting time series analysis, power users can easily spot patterns in their data. But for this example, let's focus in on the product phasers. We can compare this year's sales amount to the previous years to see if this trend is caused by seasonality or if something else is responsible for this decline in sales. To make this easier to look at, I can revisualize my sales series through my context menu. Now I can see that my sales this year are much lower than the previous year. Now we can notify our management team to investigate this further to discover the root cause for our sales trending so low for the current month. We can also give them a more detailed look at how our sales are trending for the remainder of 2019. For this, we can add a forecast analysis trend to our visualization. It will look at all our data in our series and forecast the future values based on emerging trends. Now since we are done creating our first metric set, let's bring this visualization over to the dashboard designer. It will drop our visualization on a blank freeform canvas, allowing power users to create custom pixel perfect dashboards. If I want to drag in even more visualizations, I can browse my library of metric sets and drop the visuals I'm interested in onto the canvas. I can then reposition them and resize them wherever I want, and what's great as well is that I'm not limited to just adding visualizations to my dashboard. I can also drag and drop other dashboards onto my canvas. This really opens up the possibility for my dashboard design, not to mention the option for us to reuse our already existing content. As we drag more and more visuals onto the dashboard, you may find it gets cluttered and begins to lack structure. In this case, what we can do is apply a pre-existing template that our graphic designer created for us to give structure and flash. I can then drag my visuals into specific cells, and you notice that they resize and snap into place for me. As we begin to wrap up our dashboard, 
we can add in a calendar range filter. Filters are controls that give users the ability to select the data they want to see. And we can connect this filter to the date dimension of multiple visualizations, allowing any user to select the date range they want to view the visualizations in. Lastly, we can apply a theme to our dashboard to ensure that we have a consistent color scheme and format across all of our visualizations and components. Now that our dashboard is complete, let's view this in full screen. You can see how easy it was to build a visualization in a complete dashboard using Dundas BI and warp speeds. I can begin interacting with the dashboard to test the filter control that I set up. There are tons of features that the power user can utilize when creating dashboards and visualizations, but we've only began to scratch the surface. Lastly, we have our developer user, which is a role that would be fulfilled by a more technical user. They have the ability to connect to any data source, combine different data sources using our ETL layer, the data cubes, and with those data cubes, they can manipulate and transform the data in a variety of ways and build out multi-dimensional data models. Our developer user type has access to all features spanning the entire tool. From administrative functionality with the user's accounts, to checking instance logging, all the way down to the data cubes. I'm not usually supposed to do this, but I'll give you a quick sneak preview of our ETL layer, our data cubes. Dundas BI's powerful ETL layer gives the developer user the ability to manipulate and cleanse the data to transform it into complete and reusable data models. This can be done by joining between multiple data sources, performing mathematical calculations, writing custom C Sharp, Python, and R scripts for data generation, and the list goes on. The logic of any data cube is displayed visually so it's easy to view the data at different stages of the process. Even when it comes to big data, the data cubes have patented technology that allows for fast data extraction, enabling your dashboards and metric sets to load optimally. Thank you for watching our overview video. Don't forget, there is so much more content that covers these topics in greater detail. Be sure to check it out. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or email and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching.